Instagram for you. Yeah. No, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, so no. I don't need to mix it up. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to today's session. God bless you for tuning in. We love you. Let us know where you're watching from. Yes, yes do. Thank you, Instagram, thank you, Facebook. And uh mm. is, no mix at all, okay. Yeah. And, and uh, YouTube. Are, yeah, yeah, if you're going to watch this on YouTube later, we appreciate you. God bless you for tuning in. The pursuit of knowledge is never outdated. And sometimes you need to listen to something over and over again um, for you to get it. Even this morning, uh, I was listening to something that I've listened to a long time. Yeah. And uh, it's always good to remind yourself to see how far you've come mm -hmm. so that you can measure if some of the things you know you've changed. Yeah. You know, um, someone said something as a preacher, it's good to go back and listen to your your own Messages, teachings yeah. uh, that you preached a while back to see what has changed with time. So welcome, welcome. We appreciate you. Please let us know where you're watching from. Leave it in the comments on IG, on Facebook. God bless you. Even on a YouTube. Um, God bless you. Welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, we have our little girl with us today. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you hear the sound of a baby in the background, uh she's here with us and we're excited to be here again today this is our monthly teaching on relationship and marriage and we believe that god has a word for each and every one of you whether you're single god will give you the blueprint that would help you transition from singleness into marriage and if you're already married there are things that um you'll be reminded of you know what like my husband said there was a book we read before we got married uh, that i read before we got married I, I i keep going back to that because as at that time you had not found yourself in the field of experience so there will be little to what you can apply but now that you're in the middle of it it makes more sense going back to those books seeing the gray areas you need to pay attention to and um, so the subject of marriage just like we always say uh, we prepare for everything uh, my husband is an engineer by training. I am a physical therapist by training. I know the number of years that I've spent in school. Uh, my husband is still in school and it takes long, a long time for us to learn about our vocation, how much more marriage. So the same preparation we, we give towards her, um, our career, our profession, we should even give much more to our marriage because the bulk of your life will be spent in marriage, not outside marriage. For example, if you're a lady, you're 25, you're in your 30s, and you're believing God for long life. Let's say you want to die at the age of 80 or 90. That means the years ahead of you are still more than the years behind you. So it's very, very important that you prepare for the years ahead. So if you can spend like 10 to 15 years in school just learning about a thing how much more learning about the subject of marriage so today the title of our teaching is how to prepare for marriage how to prepare for marriage before we go can you pray for us before we start can you pray for us yes i can father we thank you for another beautiful moment with you yes thank you for your presence that is everywhere thank you lord in the homes of people people driving lord just everywhere lord we yeah. say thank you for your presence because you. you're going to be teaching us things that are necessary for our marriages to work yes, in lord. the name of jesus Amen. lord open to us understanding Amen. Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. we receive wisdom from you today Day. in the name of jesus Amen. i proclaim every scale in the eyes of people every veil that has prevented them from seeing the light of your word today let that veil be torn Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. christ thank you father because we receive clarity Amen. in jesus name we pray Amen. 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 Jesus name. all right thank you welcome once again if you are just joining us the um, title for today's teaching is how to prepare for marriage, how to prepare for marriage, and um, I would like my husband to start first. But ladies first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How to prepare for marriage? Um, let me first say this: that the decision to get married is going to affect every area of your life, whether physically, spiritually, um, financially, emotionally. Marriage will influence every aspect of your life. So who you choose matters. Who you decide to spend the journey to journey with matters a whole lot. And um, I would also like to say that there is a deep 
need for companionship within every man a need for to be intimate with a woman it's it's god wired it that way and the woman most women to desire that need for intimate relationship with a man for you to desire marriage does not, there's nothing wrong in desiring marriage there's nothing wrong in desiring to be married because there are people that think oh i, I just have to focus on future focus on career focus on purple yeah there's a place of you being focused on other areas of your life but you must also be conscious that you need to prepare man you know the scripture that says he that findeth a wife find that a good thing it not say he that finds a girlfriend that means you don't become a wife by this ring you don't become a wife by marriage you become a wife before marriage so there has to be an active preparation that you are making in that direction so there is that need for intimate for intimate relationship companionship between every man and every woman god wired us that way and marriage is one of the things marriage is designed to satisfy the need for that companionship to satisfy Despite the need for that intimate relationship but intimacy is not the only essence of marriage there are other things like I said marriage will affect every areas of your life so every area of your life so you need to consciously prepare towards it so um Mr. Benjamin how did you prepare for marriage okay well you've given your introduction so let me give my own introduction okay <laughs> Anyways, it's a beautiful thing to talk about, uh, preparing for marriage. And, and the topic is how to prepare for marriage. The first thing I want to say is that there, can, there is a how to prepare. One can be taught how to prepare for marriage. There are different things in the kingdom of God that God has given in, in, in should I say, succession, that someone can teach another generation, yeah. that the successes that a generation enjoys can be transferred to another generation. Yeah. If a people are not willing to subject themselves to learning, they will just guess through life and make a mess of what is supposed to be a beautiful life. Yeah. Even though God has created marriage to be an experience that is that is the best description of the union of christ and his church it is the mystery that god has given to man to enjoy what is to come in the future mm -hmm. it is so amazing that the more you know god the more you understand the essence of marriage mm -hmm. as grand as marriage is which is one of the first institution and when jesus came in john chapter one and, and then the divinity of jesus was spelled out in john chapter two he went to a wedding yeah. talking about the priorities of jesus christ no matter how what God has set marriage to be, if you don't know how to prepare for it, even though there is treasure in it, all you will get is trash. Mm. That is the simple truth. Mm. But the beauty about God is that He has created things that we can learn. Mm. There can be a way you can be taught to pray. Yes. You can be taught to study your Bible effectively. You can be taught to to do so many things. And marriage, preparing for marriage is one of those things that you can be taught. And so don't walk into marriage or relationship with just your feelings in your hands. Mm. Don't 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 do that. And she talked about how we humans spend a lot of time preparing for weddings. Yeah. A lot of effort, details, yeah. color. You know, they had the skin, they have to match the lights, the yeah. food, mm -hmm. everything there has to be intercontinental dish there has to be local <laughs> dish there has to be Are this fish there has to be this that there has to be this color scheme there has to be this wedding clothes but then when it comes to the marriage itself we've not learned interpersonal relationship we've not learned so many things that we've not been taught how and what is usually done is pre-wedding counseling Mm. Most times, it's not even mm. marriage counseling, counseling yeah. because marriage counseling should not end on the day of the wedding. Yes, learning how. Anyway, anyway, I'm just trying to say that there can be you can be taught on how to prepare for marriage. So I want you, your heart to be open today, that if there's something you still need to know, mm. because um, this guy, this man that the Bible calls the rich young ruler, yeah. when he came to Jesus Christ, right, and he told Jesus Christ. What must I do to inherit the kingdom? Jesus said, you know the law. Why don't you do all this? Yeah. Right? And then uh, he said, all this I have kept from my youth. And then he asked the question, what do I still lack? 
Now, I, perhaps that could be your question. What do I still lack? What do I still need to know, oh God? So I want you to prepare your heart that God speak to me. What do I still lack? What do I still need to put in place to be sure that I enjoy all you have for me in marriage? That you don't receive 70% of what marriage has to offer. You don't receive 80% of what marriage has to offer, but you receive a 100%. And that is the thing about God. If you only prepare yourself to receive 70% of what God has for you, you will only get the 70%. And so how can you prepare for marriage in such that you receive all that God has placed in marriage for us? So I want you to, your heart to be open. I want you to be very sincere that this is your day. Maybe you're already married, right? And you need to gain certain knowledge to make it better because there can always be a room for improvement, right? Yes. There can always be something that makes it work. So yes. perhaps also, I want you to just get your heart ready. Yes. Okay? So are you ready? <laughs> I believe they are ready. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, in addition to that, I know a lot of times when we begin to talk about marriage, single people feel, oh, is marriage the only achievement in life? The way these people zoom in on marriage. I want you to know that um, God has not forgotten you. The, the, the feeling of, or do they always have to talk about marriage? Do they have to always talk about marriage? Yes, marriage is essential. Like my husband said, after the divinity, the birth, and everything about Jesus' incarnation was mentioned in the book of John, the next thing that was mentioned was that he appeared in the marriage at Canaan of Galilee. Yes. That means Jesus places priority on, on marriage. Yes. The, it was the first institution that God invented. Yes. Marriage is God's invention. Yes. So it's not because, uh, oh, because uh, they are having a happy marriage. That's why they're always talking about marriage. How about we that we are single? Mm -hmm. I know you can, you're, a, you're probably a woman, you're not yet in a relationship. That does not stop you from actively preparing for the marriage you desire, yes. the marriage you are looking forward to. You don't wait till you have a man in your life or a woman in your life before you now actively start preparing. Yeah, yeah. like I said, Bob says, either find it a wife. Yes. That means you are already a wife before you are found. Yes. Not that a, it's not a ring that makes you a wife, it's, yes. not, the, it's not the wedding. The wedding is just a, a legal representation of what has happened to you in the realm of the spirit so there's a there, there, there's a way to become a wife so that you can be found so we are not shaming because this generation is funny once you are married and you start talking about marriage they believe it's only married single, uh, married people <laughs> know how to talk about don't don't feel don't feel what's the word now don't feel um, neglected or um, on, on that on that privileged because you are still single there's so much in your life you can achieve as a single woman and I want you to know that God has not forgotten you whether you're not in a relationship or you're in a relationship you don't know where you're going to get married God has not forgotten you God has not forgotten you. God designed marriage he invented it and he's going to set to you in the name of Jesus this is Amen. my desire that God will set to you in a divinely unassisted way he will connect you supernaturally with your own partner you will enjoy marriage you will you will have great testimonies testimonies your marriage will be a model a model one a kingdom one in the name of jesus mm -hmm. that's just my desire for single people um the first thing i want to talk about in preparation for marriage is never underplay the place of counseling premarital counseling never underplay the place of premarital counseling a lot of people they like my husband said they 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 put in a lot into the wedding you get oh. an event planner you want to do use the best or you spend a lot in preparing for wedding but when they say oh come and pay a token for counseling, counseling. How, how can I pay it? Okay, are they not servants of God? Are they not <laughs> freely you receive? Freely you have received. Freely freely have you. <laughs> Let me tell you, that counsel may be the reason your marriage will stand. Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, they say there is safety. Yes, there is safety. No matter how spiritual, how anointed you you are, without counsel, you can make a mess of your marriage. Yes, you can make a mess of your marriage without counsel, and that's why. See, God has God has put in a system. Like my husband said earlier, a system of preparation, like methodology of men that has gone ahead, that have gone ahead in the direction, the path you're about to take, to prepare you so that you don't have to use your own life experience as an example. They say experience is the best teacher. It does not have to be your own experience. <laughs> it does not have to be your own experience. So um don't underplay the um the role of premarital counseling i know as you're preparing actively for the marriage you're even include counseling it i remember when we were about to get married um our event planner we wanted to do um 
what's it called now? Like um, family planning because you know, I mean, you've been you've been you, you've been single for, or a, long for a long time. You've you I mean you you were looking forward to sex. You don't just don't want to have baby immediately after the next nine months of marriage. You wanted to take time to explore each other. Just you know, just have fun. So I wanted to do family planning, and then I remember we went to see a, a, a gynecologist yes. because we wanted to do it the right way. And um, we went to see a gynecologist. That what had the available methods da, 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 da. and the man offered it i mean I, I believe it was speaking by the street because if we had gone through that route if you have listened to my video on on spoken words about pregnancy you understand what i'm about to say so the man had to offer us a counsel that i believe that it was god that spoke through him not necessarily i mean you you might be a, 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 a for example you're a woman you're a virgin you've never had sex and you are going into marriage with the assumption of what you have watched in nollywood or or um no, hollywood, or hollywood. Yes. nollywood is still they are still a bit spiritual <laughs> hollywood and you are thinking you are going to approach your sexual life with what you have watched on tv it does not work you need proper education proper counseling people that will sit you down teach you line upon line precept upon precept don't enter marriage with assumption don't see god said this is my spouse it's not enough to make a marriage work yes. god said this is my spouse i mean i was led by the spirit before i married this person it's not enough to make a marriage work mm -hmm. you need the proper counsel yes. on how to live with a man how yes. to live with a woman mm -hmm. and let me put a caveat to this there are generic principles about marriage but your spouse you must as you are learning about marriage and you are applying the principles of marriage, make sure you are your, your principles are specific to the person you are married to. Yeah. For example, you would have said, heard people say things like, oh, um, the way to a man's heart is, is his belly. It's not every man that likes food. I live with a man that fasts more than he eats. So if I say um, the way that I, I'm going to win his affection is by cooking for him morning, noon, and after, I've missed it. So there are generic rules about marriage, but you must be specific in its application. Learn about the partner you're getting married to. So I cannot import a cultural rule now into my marriage because they gave me as a counsel, ah, you want your husband to love you. You want him to be home at all times, you know? And <laughs> should, should I now say that he should abandon his consecration just so that he can always eat my food? No. So learn about the generic rules of marriage, but apply the learn more about the person you are married how that rule applies to them how that rule is specific to your own partner do you understand what i'm saying so um in receiving counsel that's just uh, use wisdom in its application yes so still on counseling right uh one would wonder why the marriages of our fathers and our grandfathers worked yeah better than perhaps our generation's marriage, right? Mm. Most of these people, they, they, their mothers will call the daughters when they are getting married. Say, mm. see, this is how you should treat your husband. Yeah. This, if this happens, don't come back home. I don't want to hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And whatever you think of those moments, right, they helped the lady to shape an idea of what she was going into. Yes. They tell the man, see, you are to be responsible for this woman's this, this woman's that, this woman's this, you are to take care of this woman, you are now her father, you are now her everything. Yes. And whether, whether it, you and you like that or not, it, it it gave them an idea of what to do when they, when they get married. Yeah. And so the place of counseling is yeah. very important. There are things that you don't have to go through before you know how to react to them. Yeah. Pity a soldier that goes to war and tries to learn how to shoot gun while he is in, in the war front. Mm -hmm. You will need to learn how to use the gun before you actually go to the battle. So the place of giving you orientation, get, telling you what to expect in marriage is very key. And sometimes people don't like to invest in such things, yeah. right? Um, sometimes they don't. Uh, this is something that we need to break out of, especially as Africans. Yeah. People, some people will pay a lot of money to go watch, you know, some artists perform live. Yeah. They will go to comedy shows to make them laugh. People yeah. pay a lot of money to watch movies, movie yeah. theater. But when it comes to paying money, for example, for a marital counseling, yeah. they don't see it necessary. Mm. They just feel, you know, no, don't be part of those people. Buy books. 
listen to teachings and sometimes pay the extra to get one-on-one -on -one with the counselors mm. so that your case is dealt properly there are terrains that god may lead you to that is not familiar to everyone you may not find teachings online maybe maybe you met someone online for example right mm. and you don't know how to navigate that maybe your parents cannot give you the proper advice because they don't know that terrain they don't they are not on social media like you are now you need to go to someone you need to be on that counseling to how can this work what yeah. are the things that are different from just yeah. normal meeting someone in church yeah. for example if you don't know even though god may have designed that that person is your spouse if you don't know how to you will end up making a mess of it mm. and you'll be frustrated yeah you know there's nothing as painful mm. as knowing that this is the will of god but you're not enjoying it, it doesn't feel like it you know so see, another thing that i believe counseling will help is for you to understand the um other gender you may know a lot about the bible but you may not know the way a woman thinks or god the way god has wired a woman for example men are very logical while women are very emotional so you may be highly anointed highly spiritual you know a lot of things about the bible but you don't know the way a woman wants to be loved a woman understands affection you don't know the way she interprets situation so these are things counseling will help you and it's it's rooted in the scripture in the book of titus chapter 2 um verse three to four this was paul talking to past, um, titus who was the pastor of a church he says similarly teach the older women to live in a way that honors god he says they must not slander others or be heavy drinkers instead they should teach others what is good verse four now says these older women should must train the younger women did you see that that that's that's like mentoring counseling that the people that have gone ahead they must be able to train the people that are coming behind older and younger in this context may not necessarily have to do with age it may just have to do with experience it says let the older women train the younger women to love their husbands why do i need someone to train me how to love that means there's a way i ought to love my husband he says and their children to live wisely and be pure to walk in their homes to do good to be submissive to their husband he says then they will not bring shame on the word of god mm. So there has to be a training, a mentoring, a counseling. So as much as you are spending a lot of money on the wedding, make sure you invest a lot on counseling. Go for knowledge. Yes. Go for knowledge. You don't assume you know. I know you are highly spiritual, highly anointed. Marriage is an institution that requires a lot of learning. Yes. Go for knowledge. Yes. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. He says, let the older women tr train. Another translation will say, teach. Yeah, counsel yeah. is important. We yeah. were taught when we we're getting married. I mean, I don't, I, I don't actually believe that you should consider marriage. I remember a time I was listening to a man of God. He said in his church, if any, that the reason that that there's a, the rate of divorce all over America is so high everywhere. I think it's like fifty percent or even more than that of everyone getting married. That means if ten people are getting married today, there is um there there is um a hundred percent tendency that five pe five of the marriages will not work. So they said in the end, in their entire country, the rate of divorce in their church was the least. And they were asking him, what are you doing differently? And he said, before a man and a woman <laughs> I I will get married in this church, there is a course they have to do for like a year. Eight, As, eight so, months. Is it eight months? Yeah. Just so, so. that I want to spend the rest of my life yeah. with it. Like you first have to finish the course before they will even consider joining you yes. together. Yeah. He said that was why the rate of the and the entire co their country the rate is it's a mega church. So why people were asking him how come? What are you doing differently that we don't know? Even amongst believers, divorce was like very on on the high side. So yeah. knowledge is that powerful. Yes, if you don't go for knowledge, you make a mess of treasure. Yeah. And so this man, <laughs> he mandates everyone that wants to get married in his church. You must take eight months to mm -hmm. learn about marriage yep. under guidance under supervision you'll be taking exams you'll be <laughs> when yeah. you are done you will know your partner very well you'll understand what marriage is about you'll understand what it means to live with someone else yeah. you know um we live in a culture where so yeah. many people they, there's no problem in living with the person even though they are not married to the person mm. they co-inhabit and yeah. so it's not a problem to them but one thing they don't understand is that it's not the same thing as 
being married to someone, going before God and giving an oath that this is the person I'll stay for the rest of my life, yeah. it changes everything. You yeah. need to learn how to live post that covenant of wedding. You yes. need to know. And so, once again, go for knowledge. We cannot overemphasize this. We ourselves, we've read books, we've done, we, we, we yeah, teach people, so we teach people about marriage. But when it was time for our own marriage, mm. oh, we had, pl I was getting tired. <laughs> 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 after all the books we had read, after all the teachings we've listened to online, we still had to do marriage counseling. counseling. We still had to do that. Yeah, we even still after had to marriage, that. we still do Even that. after marriage, we still, it, it's not because if at, at that day of our wedding day, if someone calls me and say this is what is going on in my marriage what would i will have something to say mm. but you still have to subject yourself and say god what do i still mm. lack so that you are sure you are you are thorough you know that's what the bible says about the word of god right it's able to make every man of god to be thoroughly equipped mm. Thorough, you are bred through. There is no leakage. You're not like Ephraim that is done on one side and on the other side you're undone. No, you are thorough so that there is nothing. Your marriage will be heaven on earth. Yeah. See, God wants to mirror his glory in the lives of people. Yeah. Let your light so shine, shine before men, right? Not just to shine. Let it so shine. Let your marriage be something that the world will look at and they are in awe. Like they cannot have this. Just like the apostles in Acts of the Apostles, right? The, the world could not join themselves to them. They seemed too high a people to be a part of just because there was something different. Mm. There was power in their midst. Mm. And, 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 and let our marriage be that way. So that people are... I remember, I know we're st staying on knowledge, it's very important. So I remember we have this f uh, friends of ours, you know, believers, their wedding, their marriage is, is, is worth talking about. It's just amazing, Moses, right? Yeah. And so some other folks, you know, that are also our friends, that are not a good believers, let me use that word, right? They also got married and they are going through a lot in their marriage and then they reach out to Moses and like, how do you deal with all these disagreements in marriage? How do you deal with quarreling in marriage? How do you deal? And Moses is like, there is, there is, we don't fight. There's no, it's like, no, 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 no. I mean, when you have, because they don't believe that you can have a home where there is peace. Mm. And when this, my friend is saying, no, no, this is our own home. It seems as if they are lying. Mm. You know, no, it does not have to be this way. God wants people everywhere that their testimony is the same, yeah. that we are enjoying our marriage. And that's why I don't know if you realize it. God is very intentional to release a lot of voice on marriage in this season. Yes. A lot of voice. Yes. Right now, they have, they've been there for a long time, but God is making is in amplifying their voice, that their yeah. voices are going, even right now. Those of us, we do videos. Whenever you do a video on marriage or dating or relationship, <laughs> it looks like God it gives it more. more because God is intentional to make sure that people don't miss it. Mm. If you miss it on a marriage yeah. platform, you mm. will struggle through life. Yes. That is the simple truth. Yes. You will struggle through life. Okay. So go for knowledge. Don't be tired of learning. Yeah. Listen over and over again. Yes. Go back to the things you've listened to before. Make sure you still remember them. Okay, this is it. That's different between a lady. That's a different between a man. This is how a lady wants to be loved. This is this. Go. Read again, read again. Just make sure you are thoroughly ready for marriage. Before you're given a degree, you spend four years in the university before you're given a paper. And even that paper, they'll still need experience from you to even employ you. I'm just saying that we, we should take this thing seriously. You could say, okay, God, I want to use this one year to learn about marriage. Mm. Perhaps your learning is a way of telling God that you're getting ready, ready. for your spouse to come. Yes, yes. Just yes. be intentional. Yes. See, let your work speak to God that this guy is ready. Because when, when Adam was in the garden doing all he was doing, God was like, oh, it is not good that this man be, be alone. Good. Let me make him a help fit for him. So go for knowledge. And in your ability, in your, in your, in your adventure of knowledge, you're indirectly telling God that you're ready for your life partner to come. All right. So second point, after going for knowledge, please work on yourself, interpersonal relationship, your character, work on yourself. What do you want to talk about? Um, I'd like to say that your experiences in marriage is as good as your experience as a single person. That means if you are being a good, well-behaved, sound character believer before marriage, 
you would be the same in marriage because nothing changes on the air that you are now joined with this person the truth is that marriage should make you better but if you are the type that has been selfish as a single person you won't suddenly become selfless in marriage no. because in marriage you marriage is an altar of selflessness marriage is an altar of selflessness the reason people have issues a lot is because they are self-centered selfish let me show you a scripture in the book of first corinthians when bible was talking when paul was talking about marriage in the book of first Corinthians. let me use my phone first corinthians chapter seven, um, seven. seven. seven or eight first corinthians talking about either um that one that is married pleases his own uh himself and um yeah it's chapter seven or verse ten or eleven or so uh -huh, it's seven verse thirty two oh, okay hmm. it says 32 to 33 i want you to listen to this carefully he says i want you to be free from the concerns of this life an unmarried man can spend his time doing the lord's work and thinking about how to please him that means how to please the lord my focus as a single person to be to please the lord he now says but a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife that means the goal of a married man it's not to please himself. Mm -hmm. He said it is to please his wife. In marriage, I'm supposed to, we are supposed to outdo each other in love. See, marriage is an altar of selflessness where you have to sacrifice your selfish ambition, your self-centeredness. That my goal is to make sure that this place uh, mm -hmm. is pleased with me. And if there's one thing I appreciate about us, if, about my marriage, is that you try to outdo each other in love. I do. I, I'll do you, Jerry. Wait till, wait till they talk. <laughs> <laughs> try to uh, do, uh, 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 do all these things you're wearing. <laughs> let, let me give you <laughs> don't mind him. We try to outdo each other. You are talking as though I don't love. You. See, <laughs> as even say God it, say it. <laughs> even God, eh? God acknowledges that. See, I know that your attention is now divided as a married man, as a married woman. But in marriage, your focus is not on yourself. Yes. So, as a single person, one of the reasons you need to develop character, develop character. See, self selflessness will not jump on you now that you are married. Selflessness will not jump on you. Now your money is divided. Your attention is divided. Someone will always be in your space. Someone will always demand your attention. There are times you will not feel good, but your spouse wants you. There are times you are not in the mood, but your spouse is hyper, hyper, in, as in, is in a hyper mode. And in it, like, it's like dying to self. It's an altar of selflessness. So as a single person now, you have the privilege, the opportunity. Maybe you have younger ones around you. Start, you know, exercising. Exercising me. Like you collect 20,000 as, as a salary. You don't say, I cannot pay all my bills. I cannot still be taking care of this person. See, in marriage, your <laughs> everything is automatically no longer your own. It is not our thing. So start practicing as a single person. That's what I want to say about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just on the same front. Yeah, marriage is about sacrifice. No doubt about that. So one of the best advice I received while getting married was my. He called me, my mentor, and said, Benjamin, when I wanted to get married, I told myself that if it, if it means me giving a hundred percent to this marriage. I'm willing to do it to make it work. Now, what he meant by 100% was that if I am the one that will cook, if I'm the one that will go to work, if I'm the only one that is to clean the house, if I'm the only one that will wash the bathroom, take care of clothes, if I'm the one doing everything and she just sits at home, watch TV, <laughs> I am willing to do everything to make sure the marriage, because I am sure God said this is your wife. Mm. Such a mindset. Do you, do you know the amount of sacrifice that would take from you if you come from work and enter the kitchen to cook and the woman is sitting at home? Mm. I'm just using all the other way around. That the woman, you do everything for the man, do everything for the man and you still go to work and the man does not have a job and he's sitting at home, will not even clean the house. Do you, do you, but the man said that this was what he agreed. That if it takes him giving a hundred percent, for it to work, he's willing to do it. The yeah. question is, how well can you sacrifice? 
and people think that okay i will do it when i get married god places things around us or people around us to help build us to help increase our long suffering our forbearance for people's excesses or people's uh, misbehaviors and, and so uh, like she said you may have siblings at home how well do you sacrifice for them yeah. you know you know some of you are older siblings sometimes just take your meat and give it to your younger sibling without them asking those little things you do are prepared you mentally to just say okay, I'm willing to give mine to oh, someone else yeah. I'm willing to forsake my own enjoyment just so that someone else can have something extra when you have just a little money what do you do with it mm-hmm. do you just okay some of you live in your parents house for example yeah. for example and your parents are still taking care of most of the stuff do you just say my money is for me to save mm-hmm. or can you say daddy don't worry I'm gonna take care of the light bill in this house oh, this even though you know taking care of the light bill will not give you a lot of savings when you go to the university or when you are done yeah. but you are taking responsibility to sacrifice to make sure that everyone is settled yeah. Marriage is about sacrifice. Yeah. You have to learn before you get into marriage. Yes. That is the truth. Yes. So God will place you in situations now give play, create things around you so that it will try you. Please don't cry in the middle of those, you know, inadequacies mm. or there are a lot of demands for your money, for your time. Mm. Perhaps God is preparing you. I, I used to say this when my, when my neighbors in school, my roommates, when they could not clean the kitchen, when they could not clean the bathroom, right? What I mentally told myself is that what if God gives you a woman that she's perfect <laughs> in beauty, in everything, except she does not like to clean the kitchen and the bathroom, what would you do? So perhaps this is a way for you to learn to do some of these things. So I did not quarrel with them. I never fought with them. In fact, one of them assumed, I always say this, that the water you use in bathing already washes the bathroom, right? It's soapy water because they never saw it dirty. You understand, but 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 that those are some things that God created that scenario around me so that I can learn to just be with someone that does not like doing something and do it without any friction. So perhaps that is yours. Work on yourself. Make sure that you are prepared to sacrifice. What do you want to add? Um, I remember strongly um, the time when I was single. I believe one of the major preparations God made me to go through before I got married was me allowing people to live within my space. I like, uh, like I used to say, I grew, I'm, I'm, I'm the fifth child of five. I grew up <laughs> as the last born. I, I was privileged to a lot of things. Like I was that child of privilege. Like you, had, you just have access to a lot of sis- sisters that provide everything you need. You're not really taking responsibility for other people. So God, God brought people into my space, not because they could not take care of themselves well god wanted to give me a privilege of taking responsibility for other people i remember then they could not understand pastor Shea, why are you always doing everything you know is, is it like you are trying to command their respect by taking by doing this no 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 see it was god the god was taking me personally through a process because i remember another time when i was still single the lord said to go and empty my entire account like when i was single i empty my entire account and what i'm talking about is like more was than it, was it to a man no to god <laughs> Sorry, all of you people giving man, man money. <laughs> I didn't report on my story. I said, What are the most unbelievable things you've done for love? Yeah. And most of these people were talking about like they gave their entire savings. They said she gave out all her money for masters. I mean, I, I, God used that as an as an occasion to prepare me. So there was a day God told me to go and empty my entire account mm. for a church project. And it was more than half a millionaire. Like getting to a point where you 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 are total when it comes to your your need is no longer yeah. your 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 property is no longer your property yeah. you can say god you can lay demand on anything yeah. i have anything mm-hmm. anything that is mine yeah. now that in, in you are in marriage finances is a major trouble spot in marriages people some when some women believe this one is my money that mm-hmm. one your money is our money yes. like uh, spend on me so it's my life <laughs> no in marriage is our money god would have taught you how to sacrifice i mean what if you find yourself in a position whereby you are any more than your spouse does it not make you lose the respect you have for your spouse because he's in a moment where he's less privileged no god would have taught you giving you several opportunities to learn sacrifice to learn selflessness to learn how to take responsibility for other people because in marriage whether you like it or not, it will happen. 
Yeah. And when people are not able to sacrifice that selfishness, that is what causes issues, trouble spots. Like, oh, he's too stingy. He does not take care of me. Yeah. When she gets her own money, she uses it to do major projects. Yeah. It's our money we use to take care of the entire... Yeah. My money we use to take care of the entire household. No. So learn it now that you're still single. And yeah. if you are married, listening to us or watching this, uh, we want you to know that marriage is not about taking care of your own needs, but pleasing your wife. Yeah. See, I, I'll read it again, verse 33 to 34. It says, but a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities and, <laughs> and how to 